Mike here with the paddle and Yowsh bringing you Creepy Gaming. This is the show where we take a look at all kinds of creepy video game aspects. It could be creepy Easter eggs, scary locations, we might even cover a creepypasta or two. Last episode I received this strange disc and honestly I don't know where it came from, who sent it, I don't even know what's on it. I'm kind of scared to look at it, to be completely honest with you. When I come across a strange disc with a sketchy black marker written across it, there's only one expert that comes to mind. Let me make a phone call. This should only take a couple seconds, so just hold tight. Hold Mudahar, buddy! How's it going, man? No, oh, no, things are good. They could be better, but things are good. How about yourself? Well, good, good. Glad to hear that. No, no, I haven't played that yet. That's any good? Yeah? Oh, good. Yeah, no, I've heard good things about it. No, Boogerman is a masterpiece. It is. It's probably my favorite game on Sega Genesis. Oh, yeah, definitely. Almost as good as Moonwalker. Yeah, no, I, actually, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Can't remember. Oh, well, fuck it. Have you ever played Half-Life? Most of you are probably already aware of the Half-Life series. If not, then what are you doing watching this? Go play it! It's awesome! Considered by many as some of the greatest games of all time, Half-Life is a very well-rounded series. Developed by Valve, the first Half-Life game was released in 1998 to a great response from both players and critics alike. The Half-Life games share the same universe with Valve's sister series, Portal. That being said, players have been patiently waiting for a follow-up to both titles, spawning the joke that Valve doesn't know how to count to three. I've heard recently that Half-Life 3 has been confirmed, but I've heard this rumor so many times in the past that I won't believe it until I hold the damn game in my hand. Sorry about that. Just, just got my hopes up so many times. You play as Gordon Freeman, a theoretical physicist initially employed by the Black Mesa Research Facility. You may recognize Black Mesa as the competitor of Portal's Aperture Science Labs. Apparently, Black Mesa was researching this unknown crystal artifact. Through their experiments with the anti-mass spectrometer, an interdimensional rift was created. Did you get all that? Basically, a black hole was created, causing these strange creatures to enter our world. There, is that better? Now that being said, Half-Life 2 is not so much a horror game as it is an action-adventure FPS. But don't let that fool you. It's not your typical first-person shooter. This game has a lot of character and a lot of creepiness to it. The creatures in this game have their own scare factor just by themselves. For example, in Half-Life 2, you will inevitably come across some zombies. Or even worse, fast zombies. No. No, 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 no! But that's not the scary part. What's so freaky is the sounds that the zombies make. Here, let's take a listen. Pretty disturbing, right? Well, you just wait. The sounds are enough to haunt your dreams just by themselves, but it really gets creepy when I reverse that very same audio track. Wow. 
I don't know who is credited as the voice actor for this soundbite, but somebody needs to check and make sure this fucker's still alive. The voiceover itself sounds like somebody being tortured, pleading, begging for their life. Why this clip was reversed, I have no idea. Maybe because it was so disturbing. Maybe this track was intended for a different character altogether. I don't know. Either way, pretty creepy. Leave it to Val. Something similar was found in Portal 2 with the Ratman audio I covered in a previous episode. The backmasked audio makes for some good old fashioned creepy gaming. Since I started the season of highly requested episode, one character's name kept popping up in the comments. That would be the G-Man. For those unaware, the G-Man is a character you will encounter on multiple occasions. This mysterious man is considered a sinister interdimensional bureaucrat. He is always seen wearing a grayish blue suit and most of the time carrying his trademark briefcase. He carries himself in a very strange manner and his way of speaking is creepy enough. He has an interesting way of putting emphasis on certain syllables. Just listen for yourself. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. The G-Man first appears in the Sector C line in the opposite tram during the first game's opening sequence. When you arrive at the test labs, you discover that the G-Man somehow has mysteriously arrived before you have. This is good indication as to what kind of omnipresent being you are dealing with here. That's what's so creepy about him is the fact that he stalks you throughout the entire game as well as its sequels. You will be walking, minding your own business, trying to reach your next objective. You'll see a figure moving in the distance. Upon further inspection, you will see that it's him. The G-Man can also be seen on various monitors throughout the game. Again, much like Doug Ratman, it can be a weird feeling of being followed, regardless if it's in a video game or not. The more you play, the more you will realize that the G-Man isn't stalking you as much as he is leading you. Now from this point on, I will probably cover a spoiler or two, so... Spoiler alert! Alright, you ready for this? The games never fully explain who the G-Man is. They only spoon feed you just a little information at a time, just enough to make you want to find out more. At the end of the first game, you encounter the main boss. This creepy creature actually has the power of speech, which makes it that much more disturbing. And it speaks English too, how convenient. Most people believe that nah, 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 actually references the G-Man. Listen to this. Their slaves we are, their slaves we are. You are man, he's not man. For you he waits for you. The truth. After the boss battle, the G-Man brings you to safety in a strange sequence. The G-Man takes all of your items, claiming that most of them were quote-unquote government property, as he then explains that he's been watching you very carefully. Eventually, the scene changes into what appears to be a fast-moving Black Mesa tram. The G-Man then explains that he has recommended Gordon's services to his quote-unquote employers and offers him a job. The G-Man continuously refers to his employers. Who is he referencing? 
Now we can talk about the G-Man's appearances throughout the series all day long. But what I want to discuss is the theories regarding this strange character. Who is he? I've heard rumors that the G-Man was initially supposed to be the overseer of Black Mesa and then later rewritten for the sequels. I could buy that. A lot of stories get written as they go along. There's also speculation that the G-Man is actually Gordon Freeman, or at least some version of him. This theory is usually shot down pretty quick, though. The only reason people think that is because their names are so similar. Other players' theories include that the G-Man is actually God, or at least some kind of interdimensional being. Some say he's an alien, which I can see that. I've also heard the theory that the G-Man is some kind of men in black like government agent. Is the government these mysterious employers that the G-Man keeps speaking of? Does he work for Black Mesa? Or possibly aliens? The truth is that Valve left a lot of mystery surrounding the G-Man on purpose to leave you wanting more. It's like that part in Half-Life 2 where you think you're going to get some information from Eli. It just leaves you wanting more. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just good storytelling. It makes you want to play more and progress further, looking for answers. And I'm sure more will be revealed if we ever do actually get a Half-Life 3. So what are your thoughts and theories of the G-Man? Who is he? Who does he work for? Why does he always wear that same suit? What's in his briefcase? Who will win Big Brother this season? Whatever happened to Mudahar? Oh shit, Mudahar. Mudahar, buddy, you still there? Oh, good. Okay, I know you're a big Half-Life fan, so why don't you share with the creepy community your thoughts on the G-Man? Thank you, Mike. So what do I think about G-Man from the Half-Life series? Well, I've been a Half-Life player for a very long time. I, I like the series, and G-Man was one of those characters that always joked sometimes about, you know, he's this IRS guy, or he's this, you know, government dude who just he's by the books, just there to investigate, and harmlessly did think he was more of a background character. But I think as you, I mean, as you played the game more and more, Half-Life 1, he had this omnipresent feeling, like he was everywhere, like he was... You know, like you did see him everywhere, you know, he was here, and he has these inhuman powers where he can, you know, go through parallel universes, all that. So, my my main theory that I go with is I do think that he is God, or I think a representation of God in the Half-Life universe. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, he, again, I, like I said, he did have these superhuman powers that not everyone has, and he always appears here and there, and I think he's using... Gordon as a pawn or a messenger type thing. He's using Gordon as a sort of messiah type figure, if you will. You know, I mean, like, if you look in the Half-Life series, Gordon is sort of this messiah-like figure, you know. He is considered special in the eyes of his uh, peers and whatnot, and he's sort of considered as an enemy, if you will, to the to his aggressors. So I think, I think that sort of relationship helps bring my theory into light. I mean, that he is this godlike entity. And, and, you, and I know it's not like some obscure theory. That is a general accepted, I guess, theory, if you will, of G-Man, that he is some sort of this omnipresent force. Another theory that I have, and um, I, think, I think Valve put G-Man in the game to put themselves into the game, to put a representation of themselves sort of being as the invisible pointer or the arrow or the guide to the uh, goal in Half-Life, if you will. You know, leading the player here and there whenever they're astray. I think that's what I think that's what uh, Valve kind of did with G-Man. Is they made this sort of creepy, mysterious figure that would work and serve in leading the player to uh, another point A to point B or something like that. You know, it's not like they couldn't do that already. I mean, it, I think that's what G-Man was really put in there for. Now, again, my main theory is still that he is his godlike entity, or a representation of God, or in fact, God of the Half-Life universe. That's the theory I go with, but I also do roll with the theory that, you know, Valve did put him in the game to be a guide, if you will, to lead the player one place to another, really. That's what that, that those are the kind of theories I'm rolling on. But yeah, that's really my take on the G-Man. So yeah, back to you, Mike. I gotta admit, those are some pretty good theories. I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts and opinions with all these fine folks out here. Oh no, you'll be hearing from me again. Alright, talk to you later.
So there you have it. What are your thoughts on the G-Man? What do you think about Half-Life 2? So be sure to leave your thoughts, theories, and suggestions in the comments below. I like to call you all the creepy community because I see these videos as perfect forums for everybody to talk about their theories. Be sure to like and favorite for more creepy gaming. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Hey today, guys, I'd like to thank Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers and Haunted Gaming for being a part of this episode. Hi, I'm on the mic with this. Telling you, saying keep it. Stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Peace.